Ladies and gentlemen, the subject of our discussion is, is never tell people what you do. Now, you might be wondering, Neville, what do you mean by this? Surely we must communicate our actions to others. But I implore you to listen closely. For within this seemingly simple statement lies a world of wisdom that can unlock the very doors of creation itself. When I say never tell people what you do, I am not speaking of the mundane activities of your daily life. No, I am referring to something far more profound. I am speaking of the inner workings of your imagination, the sacred temple within which you craft your desires and shape your reality. You see, my dear friends, the world of Caesar, this outer world of appearances, is but a shadow of the true reality that exists within you. It is in the realm of imagination, in the quiet sanctuary of your mind, that true creation takes place. And it is this inner work, this divine labor of imagination, that you must guard with the utmost reverence and care. Why, you ask? Why must we keep our imaginative acts a secret? The answer, my friends, lies in the very nature of creation itself. For you see, the moment you speak of your inner work to another, you release the energy that should be conserved for your imaginal act. You dilute the power of your creation by exposing it to the doubts, criticisms, and limited beliefs of others. Consider for a moment the process of planting a seed. When a farmer plants a seed in the fertile soil, does he immediately dig it up to show others? Does he constantly unearth it to check its progress? Of course not. He knows that the seed must be left undisturbed in the darkness of the earth, allowed to germinate in secret before it can sprout and grow into a mighty plant. Your desires, your imaginal acts, are like these seeds. They must be planted in the rich soil of your subconscious mind and left to take root in the darkness of secrecy. Only then can they grow and manifest in the light of your outer world. Remember, my dear listeners, that the world is yourself pushed out. Every person you encounter is but a reflection of a state within you. When you share your inner work with others, you are, in essence, exposing your tender growing desire to aspects of yourself that may not yet be in harmony with your wish fulfilled. Let us delve deeper into this concept. Imagine you have a burning desire to become a successful author. You have been faithfully engaging in your imaginal acts, seeing yourself holding your published book, feeling the weight of it in your hands, hearing the praise of your readers. You are living from the end, experiencing the joy and satisfaction of your realized dream. Now, in a moment of excitement, or perhaps seeking validation, you decide to share this vision with a friend or family member. What happens? More often than not, you are met with well-meaning but limiting responses. Writing a book is hard work, they might say. The publishing industry is so competitive. Do you really think you can do it? In that moment, doubt creeps in. The seed of your desire which was growing so beautifully in the fertile soil of your imagination, is suddenly exposed to the harsh elements of the outer world. The energy that should have been directed towards your imaginal act is now dissipated in defending your vision, or worse, in trying to convince others of its validity. But remember, my friends, you need not convince anyone of anything. The only being you need to convince is yourself. And this conviction comes not through words spoken to others, but through the unwavering faith in your imaginal act. Let me share with you a personal experience that illustrates this principle. Many years ago, when I first began to understand the power of imagination, I had a deep desire to travel to Barbados, my homeland. However, I was in New York with no money and no parent means to make such a journey. Instead of speaking about my desire to others or lamenting my current circumstances, I went within. Every night as I lay in my bed in New York, I would close my eyes and imagine that I was in Barbados. I would feel the warm Caribbean breeze on my skin, smell the salt in the air, hear the rhythmic lapping of waves on the shore. I would imagine conversations with old friends, feeling the joy of being back home. I did this faithfully, night after night, telling no one of my inner work. To the outer world, I was still in New York going about my daily life. But in the reality of my imagination, I was already in Barbados experiencing my wish fulfillment. And then, my friends, 
the outer world reshaped itself to match my inner vision. Within a matter of weeks, I received an unexpected letter from my brother in Barbados containing enough money for my passage home. The seeming miracle had occurred. But to me, it was simply the natural outcome of my faithful imaginal act. Had I shared my desire with others, had I spoken of my imaginal acts, I might have invited doubt and disbelief into my consciousness. Instead, by keeping my inner work private, I allowed it to flourish and manifest with perfect precision. This, my dear listeners, is the power of keeping your imaginal acts to yourself. It is not about being secretive or mistrustful of others. Rather, it is about understanding the sacred nature of your inner world and protecting the gestation of your desires. Think of it this way. Your imagination is like a pregnant woman carrying a child. In those early, delicate stages of pregnancy, she does not announce it to the world. She nurtures the growing life within her, giving it time to develop and strengthen before sharing the news. Your desires, your vaginal acts, deserve the same careful nurturing. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Neville, surely there's no harm in sharing our goals and aspirations with those closest to us. Don't we need the support of our loved ones? And to this I say, your greatest support, your most steadfast ally, is your own imagination. You see, when you truly understand that imagination creates reality, you realize that you need no external validation or support. The entire universe exists within you. And by aligning yourself with the feeling of your wish fulfilled, you set in motion the forces that will bring it into manifestation. Moreover, by keeping your imaginal acts to yourself, you avoid the pitfall of seeking approval or permission from others. Remember, in your imagination, you're God. You are the operant power, the only creator in your universe. By sharing your inner work with others, you inadvertently give away this power, allowing external opinions to influence and potentially derail your creative process. Let us consider another example to illustrate this point. Imagine you have a desire to start your own business. You have a clear vision of what this business will be, and you've been faithfully living in the end, experiencing the feeling of being a successful entrepreneur. Now, if you were to share this vision with others before it has wholly taken root in your consciousness, what might happen? Even if they are supportive, their well-meaning advice and suggestions could alter your pure vision. They might say, oh, you should do it this way, or do you consider this approach? Suddenly, your clear imaginal act becomes clouded with the thoughts and opinions of others. But if you keep your imaginal act to yourself, nurturing it in the fertile soil of your mind, you allow it to grow and develop in its purest form. You remain true to your vision, unswayed by external influences. When your desire manifests in the outer world, it will do so with a perfection that matches your inner image. This principle of keeping your imaginal acts private extends beyond just manifesting material desires. It applies equally to your spiritual growth and self-transformation. When you decide to embody a new state of consciousness, when you choose to manifest a new version of yourself, it is crucial to keep this inner work private. Why? Because the old man, the former self, still exists in the minds of those around you. If you declare your intention to change, you may be met with skepticism or resistance. That's not like you, they might say, Oh, I can't see you doing that. These reactions, though often well-intentioned, can serve to reinforce the old state and make your transition to the new state more challenging. Instead, go about your transformation quietly. In the privacy of your imagination, see yourself as you wish to be. Feel the naturalness of this new state. Live from it in your inner world and let the outer world adjust itself accordingly. In time, others will notice the change in you but by then your new state will be so firmly established that their opinions will have no power to shake it. My friends, understand that the creative power within you is beyond measure. You are not bound by the limitations of your current circumstances, nor are you defined by the opinions and expectations of others. You are limited only by your own imagination and your willingness to live from your desired end. When you truly grasp this truth, you will understand why it is so crucial to never tell people what you do in your inner world. Your imaginal acts are sacred. They are the very substance of creation. They deserve to be protected, nurtured, and allowed to flourish in the rich soil of your subconscious. 
Think of the great inventors and innovators throughout history. Did they announce their ideas to the world before they had brought them to fruition? No, they worked in secret in the laboratory of their minds until their creations were ready to be revealed to the world. You, my dear listeners, are no different. You are the inventor of your life, the architect of your reality. Your imagination is your workshop, your sacred space where you craft the life you desire. Guard it zealously, enter it with reverence, and allow your creations to develop in secret. Now, some of you might be wondering, but Neville, how do I maintain this secrecy in my daily life? Won't people notice if I'm acting as though my desire is already fulfilled? And to this, I say, live from the state of the wish fulfilled, but do so naturally without announcement or fanfare. If you have imagined yourself into a state of wealth, for example, you need not suddenly start spending money lavishly or talking about your newfound riches. Instead, simply carry yourself with the quiet confidence of a wealthy person. Make decisions from that state of consciousness. Let your outer actions flow naturally from your inner conviction. Remember that the change happens first in your imagination. The outer world will conform to your inner assumptions and divine timing and in ways that you need not orchestrate. Your role is simply to persist in your assumption, to live from the end and to allow the miracle to unfold. This, my friends, is the art of manifestation. It is not about forcing change in the outer world, but about changing your inner world and allowing the outer to reflect that change. And this inner work, this divine creative act, is most potent when Christ. Consider the words of scripture. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who's unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This is not merely religious instruction, but a profound metaphysical truth. Your imagination is your private room, your secret place of creation. It is here, in the unseen realm of mind, that your desires are conceived and nurtured. By keeping your imaginal acts private, you are not being deceitful or insincere. On the contrary, you are honoring the creative process, respecting the gestation period of your desires, and allowing them to manifest in their fullest most perfect expression. Think of it this way. When an artist is working on a masterpiece, does he invite the world into his studio to watch every brush stroke? Does he seek the opinion of others on his unfinished work? No, he works in private, pouring his vision onto the canvas, only revealing the finished piece when it is complete. Your life is your masterpiece and your imagination is your studio. Work on it in private with devotion and faith and reveal the finished work to the world through its manifestation. Now, my dear friends, I want you to understand that this principle of keeping your imaginal acts private does not mean you must live a life of isolation or secrecy. It does not mean you cannot share your joy or your successes with others. It simply means that the creative process, the inner work of imagination, is best done in the privacy of your own consciousness. When your desire manifests, when your imaginal act has come to fruition in the outer world, then by all means share your joy, celebrate your achievement. But remember, even then, there is no need to reveal the inner workings of your manifestation. Let your success speak for itself, and let others wonder at the seeming magic of your life. You see, my friends, when you consistently manifest your desires without revealing your methods, you become a living testament to the power of imagination. You become an inspiration to others, a beacon of possibility in a world that often seems limited and constrained. People will look at you and say, how does he do it? How does she achieve such amazing things? And in their wondering, in their awe of your achievements, you plant seeds of possibility in their consciousness. You awaken in them the dormant understanding that they too possess this creative power. This, my dear listeners, is how you can best serve others. Not by telling them what you do, but by being a living example of what is possible, one fully embraces the power of imagination. Let us delve even deeper into this concept. When you keep your imaginal acts private, you are not only protecting your creative process, but you are also demonstrating an unshakable faith in the power of your imagination. You are saying to the universe, I need no external validation or support. I know that what I have imagined is as good as done. This level of faith this absolute conviction in the reality of your imaginal acts is what separates those who consistently manifest their desires 
from those who struggle to see results. When you know, truly know, that your imagination creates reality, you feel no need to speak of your desires or seek confirmation from others. You simply live from the state of the wish fulfilled, confident in the knowledge that the outer world must conform to your inner assumptions. Consider the life of any great achiever. Did they spend their time talking about what they were going to do or did they simply do it? Did they seek the approval of others before pursuing their vision? Or did they forge ahead, guided by an inner conviction that others could neither see nor understand? The answer, my friends, is clear. Those who achieve greatness, those who manifest seeming miracles in their lives, are those who understand the power of silent imagining. They are those who go about their divine labor quietly, allowing their achievements to speak for themselves. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Neville, surely there are times when we must speak of our plans or share our goals with others. And to this I say, there is a vast difference between speaking from a state of lack or desire and speaking from a state of fulfillment. When you speak of your plans or goals from a state of lack, when you say, I want to be or I'm trying to achieve, you are affirming the absence of your desire. You are declaring to the world, and more importantly to your own subconscious mind, that you do not yet possess what you seek. But when you have truly embraced your desire in imagination, when you are living from the state of the wish fulfilled, there is no need to speak of future plans or goals. You simply are what you desire to be. Your words and actions naturally flow from this state of being without any need for announcement or explanation. Let me give you an example to illustrate this point. Imagine two individuals, both of whom desire to become successful entrepreneurs. The first person constantly talks about their plans, telling everyone they meet about the business they're going to start, the success they're going to achieve. They seek advice, validation, support from others. They say things like, I'm working on becoming an entrepreneur. I hope to be successful one day. The second person, understanding the principle we're discussing today, says nothing of their plans. Instead, they go within to the realm of imagination. They see themselves as a successful entrepreneur. They feel the satisfaction of running a thriving business. They assume the mindset, the bearing, the inner conviction of a successful business owner. To the outer world, this second person might appear to be going about their daily life as usual. But inwardly, they have already stepped into the reality of their fulfilled desires. And because they understand that the inner determines the outer, they feel no need to speak of their plans or seek validation from others. Which of these two individuals, my friends, do you think is more likely to manifest their desire, which is operating from a place of true power and understanding? The one who keeps silent who nurtures their desire in the secret place of imagination is the one who truly understands the creative process. They know that their outer world must, by divine law, conform to their inner assumptions. They need not force or manipulate external circumstances, for they know that as they hold steadfast to their inner conviction, the entire universe will rearrange itself to bring their desire into manifestation. This, my dear listeners, is the true art of manifestation. It is not about positive thinking or visualizing or affirming in the traditional sense. It is about assuming the state of the wish fulfilled in your imagination, living from that state quietly and naturally until it externalizes itself in your world. When you master this art, when you truly understand and apply the principle of never telling people what you do in your imagination, you will find that your life takes on a magical quality. Things will seem to work out for you in ways that others find miraculous. Opportunities will appear as if by magic. Your desires will manifest with an ease and perfection that will astonish those around you. But you, my friends, will know the truth. You will know that there is no magic, no luck, no coincidence. You will know that everything that appears in your outer world is simply a reflection of your inner assumptions, your imaginal acts. Now. Let us address another aspect of this principle. Some of you might be wondering, but Neville, what about the power of positive thinking? What about the law of attraction? Don't these teachings encourage us to speak positively about our desires? And to this I say, 
Positive thinking and speaking positively have their place, but they're not the same as living from the state of the wish fulfilled. When you truly understand that imagination creates reality, you move beyond mere positive thinking into a state of knowing. In this state of knowing, there is no need to speak positively about your desire, because to you, it is already a fact. Just as you don't go around constantly affirming that you have two arms, or that the sky is blue, you need not affirm or speak positively about a desire that you have fully accepted as real in your imagination. This is a subtle but crucial distinction. Many people mistakenly believe that by speaking positively about their desires, by telling others about their plans and goals, they are aligning themselves with their wishes. But in truth, they are often coming from a place of lack, affirming the very absence of what they say. When you keep your imaginal acts private, when you live quietly from the state of the wish fulfilled, you bypass this pitfall entirely. You are not trying to convince yourself or others of anything. You are simply being dang, naturally and effortlessly, the person who already has what you desire. Let's explore this further with another example. Imagine you desire a promotion at work. The conventional approach might be to tell your colleagues about your ambition, to actively seek opportunities to impress your superiors, to constantly affirm to yourself and others that you are worthy of the promotion. But the one who understands the principle we're discussing today would take a different approach. They would go within to the realm of imagination. They would assume the state of already having received the promotion. They would feel the satisfaction, the increased responsibility, the pride in their new position. In the outer life, they would not speak of their desire for promotion. Instead, they would simply perform their current role with the confidence and capability of someone already in the higher position. They make decisions, interact with colleagues, approach their work from the mindset of their imagined role. To others, this person might simply appear to be exceptionally good at their job. But inwardly, they are living from the state of the wish fulfilled. And in due time, the outer circumstances will rearrange themselves to match this inner conviction. The promotion will come, often in ways that seem miraculous or coincidental to others. This, my friend, is the power of keeping your imaginal acts private. It allows you to live fully from the state of the wish fulfilled without the interference of others' doubts or opinions, without the energy-draining need to convince or impress. Now I want to address a concern that some of you might have. You might be thinking, but Neville, doesn't keeping our desires private isolate us from others? Doesn't it prevent us from receiving support and encouragement? To support and encouragement come not from others' approval of your desires, but from your own unwavering faith in the reality of your imaginal acts. When you fully embrace the truth that imagination creates reality, you understand that the only support you need is your own conviction. Moreover, by keeping your imaginal acts private, you actually open yourself up to receiving support in unexpected and wonderful ways. You see, when you don't tell people what you're doing or what you desire, you allow the infinite intelligence of the universe to orchestrate the perfect circumstances for your desire's manifestation. You free yourself from the limitations of your own logical mind, which might only see a few possible paths to your goal. Instead, you allow for infinite possibilities for divine orchestration that far exceeds what you could have planned or anticipated. Think back to my experience of traveling to Barbados. Had I told others of my desire, had I actively sought ways to make the trip happen, I might have limited myself to the obvious solutions saving money, seeking a loan, looking for cheaper travel options. But by keeping my desire private, by living from the state of already being in Barbados in my imagination, I allowed for a solution that I could never have logically anticipated. My brother sending me the exact amount I needed. This, my dear listeners, is the magic that unfolds when you never tell people what you do in your imagination. You allow for miracles. You open yourself up to the infinite possibilities of the universe. You demonstrate your faith in the power of your imagination by refusing to limit it to the constraints of logical planning or the opinions of others. Let us delve even deeper into this principle. When you keep your imaginal acts private, you are not only protecting your creative process, but you're also honoring the divine within you. 
you are recognizing that the power to create your reality lies not in the external world, but in the depths of your own consciousness. This understanding transforms your entire approach to life. Instead of looking to others for validation, instead of seeking external solutions to your desires, you go within. You enter the silence of your own mind, the sacred temple of your imagination, and there you commune with the divine creative power. That is your true self. In this inner sanctuary, you are free from the limitations and doubts of the outer world. Here you can be, do, and have anything you desire. Here you are truly free, truly powerful, truly divine. And it is from this place of inner knowing, this place of silent imagining, that true transformation occurs. <laughs> Consider the great mystics and spiritual teachers throughout history. Did they not all, in their own ways, speak of the power of silence, of inner communion with the divine? Did they not emphasize the importance of going within, of finding the kingdom of heaven inside oneself? This principle of keeping your imaginal acts private is not new. It is as old as consciousness itself. It is the hidden truth behind all great achievements, all seeming miracles, all transformations of consciousness. When you never tell people what you do in your imagination, you're following in the footsteps of these great teachers. You're applying the highest spiritual truths in a practical, tangible way. You are recognizing the divinity within you and allowing it to express itself in your life. Now, my dear friends, I want you to understand that this principle is not about being secretive or deceptive. It's not about hiding things from others out of fear or mistrust. Rather, it's about respecting the sacred nature of your creative power. It's about understanding that your imaginal acts are too precious, too powerful to be casually discussed or exposed to the doubts and limitations of others. Think of it this way. When a woman is in the early stages of pregnancy, she often chooses to keep the news private for a time. This is not because she doesn't trust or love the people in her life. It's because she understands the delicate nature of early pregnancy, the need to protect and nurture the growing life within her. Your desires, your imaginal acts, or like this growing life. They need time to develop, to take root in your consciousness before they are ready to be birthed into the outer world. By keeping them private, you are giving them the protection and nurturing they need to come to full fruition. Moreover, when you never tell people what you do in your imagination, you free yourself from the need for external approval or understanding. You recognize that the only approval you need is your own, that the only understanding that matters is your own inner knowing. This is true freedom, my friends. It is the freedom to create your reality according to your own vision, unswayed by the opinions or expectations of others. It is the freedom to live from the state of the wish fulfilled, regardless of current circumstances or external appearance. When you embrace this freedom, when you fully commit to the practice of keeping your imaginal acts private, you will find that your manifesting power increases exponentially. You will find that your desires come to fruition with an ease and perfection that seems miraculous to others. But you, my dear listeners, will know the truth. You will know that there are no miracles, only the natural operation of divine law. You will know that what appears as magic to others is simply the result of your faithful imagining, your unwavering assumption of the state of the wish fulfilled. Now, some of you might be wondering, but Neville, how do I maintain this privacy in my daily life? How do I live from the state of the wish fulfilled without revealing my inner work to others? I've naturally from your assumed state. If you have imagined yourself into a state of wealth, for example, you need not suddenly start spending lavishly or talking about your riches. Instead, simply carry the quiet confidence of a wealthy. Make decisions from that state of consciousness. Let your outer actions flow naturally from your inner conviction. Remember, the change happens first in your imagination. The outer world will conform to your inner assumptions in divine timing and in ways that you need not orchestrate. Your role is simply to persist in your assumption, to live from the end, and to allow the miracle to unfold. This, my friends, is the art of manifestation. It is not about forcing change in the outer world, but about changing your inner world and allowing the outer to reflect that change. 
And this inner work, this divine creative act, is most potent when kept private as we near the conclusion of our discussion. I want to emphasize once more the transformative power of this principle. When you never tell people what you do in your imagination, you are declaring your faith in the creative power within you. You are affirming that your imagination is God and that this God power needs no external validation or support. You are saying to the universe, I know that what I have imagined is as good as done. I need not speak of it. For it is already a fact in my consciousness. And therefore, it must become a fact in my outer world. This level of faith, this absolute conviction in the reality of your imaginal acts, is what separates those who consistently manifest their desires from those who struggle to see results. When you know, truly know, that your imagination creates reality, you feel no need to speak of your desires or seek confirmation from others. You simply live from the state of the wish fulfilled, confident in the knowledge that the outer world must conform to your inner assumptions. My dear friends, as we come to the end of this discourse, I urge you to take this principle to heart. Never tell people what you do in your imagination. Keep your creative acts private. Nurture your desires in the secret place of the Most High, which is your own wonderful human imagination. Go about your days quietly, assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Let others wonder at the magic of your life, at the seeming ease with which you manifest your desires. Let your achievements speak for themselves and let your life be a testament to the power of imagination. Remember, you are the operant power in your world. You are the God of your universe. Honor this divine power within you by keeping your imaginal acts sacred and private. Live from the state of the wish fulfilled and watch as the world reshapes itself to match your inner vision. In closing, I remind you once more, never tell people what you do. Instead, be what you desire to be. Feel it, live it, assume it in the privacy of your own consciousness. For it is in this silent assuming that true power lies. And it is from this inner conviction that all outer manifestation springs. Go now, my dear friends, and apply this principle to your lives. Enter the silence of your imagination and create the life you desire. Keep your divine labor private and let your manifested desires be a beacon of hope and possibility for others. For when you master this art, when you truly understand and apply the principle of never telling people what you do in your imagination, you become a living testament to the creative power that resides within all of us. You become an inspiration, a living proof of what is possible when one fully embraces the truth that imagination creates reality. And in this, my friends, you fulfill the highest purpose of your existence. You demonstrate the truth of your divine nature, and you light the way for others to discover the God within themselves. So go forth, imagine lovingly, and keep your sacred work private. For in this lies the key to mastering your world and manifesting your deepest desires. Remember always, instead, be what you desire to be and let your life be your message to the world.